Well, look, if you were watching television in the 80s, there was no bigger show than a country practice. Every Monday and Tuesday night, Australia sat down to see what the residents of Wandon Valley were getting up to. One of those characters was Joe Loveday, who captured our hearts from 1985 to 1989. Okay. The actress who played that iconic role is none other than Josephine Mitchell, who joins us now. Welcome, Joe, to the Ben Robin Robbo Show. Hello, Rob. Thank you for having me. Oh, I'm absolutely thrilled and I'll, I'm not afraid to admit it. Um, Joe, you've done a lot of TV and theatre work, but it's fair to say, Joe Loveday, she was the most iconic role you've played. Isn't that fair to say? Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, she was the most, I mean, she was in your living rooms for one hour twice a week. Yeah, that's so, right. So, you know, when someone is like the best thing or one of the nicest things about a country practice was that we were like family because we were there all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Not like shows now, which is an hour, maybe a week or every two weeks, you know, so. So iconic, yes. Yes. It's funny when you say that because <laughs> you had to be a family. We've seen um, situations now where actors hate each other so much they have to film the same scene separately and be spliced together. With a show like A Country Practice, which was making uh, two hours of television a week, of a drama, which is a pretty big deal, and um, you must have done something like 80 episodes a year, I would imagine. Yeah, that sounds about right because we worked for... Um, about 42 weeks of the year. Or, so yeah, you would have about, had to get yeah, along or otherwise there was no technology to have actors in different rooms. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think that's also, you know, in the olden days when <laughs> um, you were expected, that was part of your job was to get along. You didn't have as much of the uh, sort of star <clears throat> um, behaviour that I think now is uh, people are allowed to get away with. So there were no tanties on set? From the animals, yes. <laughs> Not well, from the actors. No. <laughs> It's funny you say that because the animals played a big part of a country practice and one of the stories you always read in interviews with stars at the time is how painful Fatso the wombat was to work with. What was your experience? Well, we had different Fatsos, so we never got the same Fatso. Um, and there was one particular Fatso that you knew if the um, wildlife guy, uh, the wombat wrangler, as we called him, brought him in, you knew he had a hot date on a Friday night if he brought this big, massive guy in. And if you watch the show, you'll see that sometimes um, Fatso is smaller and then yeah, sometimes right. he's very large. But um, I do remember this one night, he was like, oh, I've got to get out of here really early. And there was no sort of demarcation then. We all just um, sort of hung out together. Yeah. Um, I've got to get out of here early. I've got this really hot date with this girl. So he bought the big one and it proceeded to almost decimate the studio it went for cables it bit through things it bit through its case its big huge <laughs> plastic case that used to come in, and just chased people it, it was not happy that was not a happy wombat so what was his reasoning for bringing this one on because he thought no one wanted to work with them with the wombat they'd get through it faster yeah well because the the one this wombat was grumpy it just didn't want to be there <laughs> So it was like, well, if I bring this guy along, he'll do things and I'll I'll get to leave. <laughs> now, my wife, Amanda, who's sitting beside me, actually has a claim to fame with a country practice. She, her hands were used in the show when she was on work experience. She did work experience at Channel 7. You better put your hand in shot, Amanda. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God, of course. The... I recognise her immediately. <laughs> she pulled a wow. book. Who were, you, who were you filling in for? Oh, it was an extra. So she was she was filling in for an extra while she was on work experience. So there you go, uh, picking up a book. <laughs> it touches the show, touches everybody. This is a thing fancy in some way. Now, when we look at the TV landscape, it's hard to believe a country practice had eight to ten million viewers weekly at its height. What was it about this show that connected with viewers? Oh, always the writing. Right. Um, for me, every show goes back to the writing and Jim Davin, who created it, who's just a marvellous, um, he made 
he, he, he crafted beautiful characters, but he also crafted stories that people were interested in. Mm. And we always had a social conscience, the story, you know, we had all our lives and loves and all of that stuff, but there was a social conscience that we touched on stories that um, people uh, would be very um, tentative to touch on today because they're sort of, you know, uh, they can, in, instead of people looking on social issues as bringing people together and being connective they're now looked on as being polarizing mm. so um i mean i believe that's the reason the show did so well and also coming from the top coming from jim there was a real heart to it um and you're you were allowed to be emotional and have sentiment and it wasn't um a, a bad thing back then it's funny you say that because one classic moment of the series was when Prime Minister Bob Hawke appeared on the show because of a political issue. Let's take a look. Thank you for inviting me to your party. I wasn't sure whether I was going to be able to make it or not, but here I am. Ladies and gentlemen and children of all ages of Wandon Valley, I made a special effort to be here today because of a particular letter that was amongst dozens I received a few weeks ago from the students of Barragan High School. This girl wanted to know if politicians take any notice of kids. And I hope that my presence here today answers that question for her. What was that day of filming like? You had the Prime Minister of, of the country taking part in a drama TV series. I mean, that just doesn't happen. Um, no, it was, I remember he, we only had him for a certain amount of time. I, I can't remember how many hours, like, and he did that in one take. It was just, this is what he did. And he, mm -hmm. we said, hello, he had a couple of photographs taken and then he had to whip off because, you know, he, he was the leader of our nation at the time. Um, I just, uh, I, I, it was sort of mind blowing. Um, and in a way it's a, a sort of a, a beautiful um, expression of, of Australia's innocence too, you know, that the prime minister would actually do come on a show. <laughs> but it was also with a good message because at that time, as I remember it, the storyline in the show was that um, we were really worried about nuclear war. That's right. And, and so it was, it was a real issue. It was in the paper daily. It was, you know, how do we actually have this, this sort of thing hanging over us, this fear? So, I mean, that's where country practice did its best work, you know, where it, it took the ideas of, of what was happening at the time in our country and it, and it expressed them in a way. I mean, it was monumental to have. Bob Hawke there, it really was. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I fixated on a country practice a lot, but you've appeared in so many other Australian shows like Home and Away and All Saints, in addition to your theatre work. What do you love about acting? Everything. <laughs> um, it's like, like, honestly, seriously, it is the most wonderful thing wonderful feeling energy to be part of a group of people who all they are doing is being creative. Um, we, everybody's working towards in a family way, um, looking after each other, but it is the creativity. It's, it's just being in that frisson of, of everybody doing their best, everybody mm. wanting to do their best, you know, it's, it's fabulous. And whether it's on stage, I mean, I, I, I love stage because, you know, after the six, six weeks of, um, rehearsal, usually six weeks of rehearsal, you get to go in there and do a run of six weeks and it's you and the audience and the audience is very close so when you're doing a play that's that's really wonderful and um you have more control as an actor but um as long as you're doing what the director wants but um <laughs> on television you know there are a few more people um in post-production and stuff mm. that actually have control over what you're doing but it, it is literally being creative it is being able to sit around other people being creative that i find very addicting i find it 
marvelous. And what are your loves now? What 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 are you doing that brings you joy? Um, I, I write, uh, which I I it brings me a lot of joy and makes me feel like a normal human being. <laughs> um, when I do it and keeps me very grounded. Um, I play with my puppies. I have three puppies. <laughs> Gosh. And we're, we're scratching at the door early. You probably didn't hear it. <laughs> and uh, I read. I'm, I'm a, as you can probably see from my background, I am a huge reader. This is just one of the bookcases in my house. Wow. Um, and I, I, I have, re I know it's, you know, COVID has been terrible. Mm for lots of reasons but i'm one step away from a hermit so i have actually really enjoyed watching others take a breath and just be you know and you know we've all contracted in a way and i've i've really i mean you know people's deaths are not great no obviously um but for those of us who have been able to you know just taking that breath and going you know there are there are more things in the world than um constantly being on the go and rushing and so you know it's interesting you say that because at one stage you were on the cover of tv week pretty much weekly you know you had such a high presence and it's interesting to hear you say you've become a bit of a hermit and retreated from the world what brought that about is it because you've you've lived the side where everyone wants a piece of you and you've drawn back from that um i mean i've got to say i was i have only ever been treated very well by the audience and members of the public who have watched the shows that i've been on so it's it's never been um, a conflict. I, I think if I was uh, treated poorly, then I would be going, oh my God, I can't do this anymore. Mm. Um, um, no, I'm, I'm actually pretty much uh, uh, an, a, a, a singular person. I, I like my own company. I have always liked my own company and I think great creativity comes out of being in your own company. Um, I agree. So, yeah. Well, so it's not, I've not been forced to do it, but you know, I, I mean, I did, I, I took off quite a bit of time because I had small children and I don't have a lot of family to, who, who would have looked after those children, but those children are now grown, um, into very fine individuals. Um, so. Hmm. Well, I would love to see you back on the screen in some way, um, because I think you were just terrific and you are missed by the Australian public. So I understand taking time out for family. I really do understand that. And it's only something that I've discovered recently that's an important part to do. Um, but I really would love to see you back on our screens daily, if possible. So, Joe, whatever you do next and whatever, uh, wherever life takes you, we love you. Thank you for being on the Ben Robin Robbo Show today. It has been a pleasure. Like, um, thank you for having me. It's a Ben, Rob and Rob, Ben, Rob and Rob, Ben, Rob and Rob.